Hey, my name is Lars. We're here at Western Supermare, which is a small beach town on the west side of England. And uh, check out this long line. Normally you'll see a line like this at a regular theme park, but this is no regular theme park. This is Dismaland, it's the latest project by Banksy. We're gonna meet with a local blogger called Butterfly. She's gonna take us on a tour of the whole uh, thing. This is Dismaland, gonna go meet Butterfly. You've been here before, what was your reaction? Well, it's very confusing. It's not what you expect. So don't have any expectation when you go inside because you don't know whether it's a fun fair, whether it's an art show, what is it? Is it a street art show? Uh, Banksy didn't want to do a street art show this time. It's a contemporary art show with a couple of street artists. Okay, interesting. Let's go in. that it's not an artwork but it's the atmosphere here yes it try, feels try to describe it for the people that are not here well it feels like a fun fair where you can be entertained but at the same time it's depressing and it's a real view on society on a uh, you know the everyday subject that we should look at uh, like a wake-up call on everything like environment politics yeah it's like you're entertained but it's a little bit dismal and depressing and it's a little bit shit at but the at the same time, it's the reality of yeah. the society we are living on. The major thing that stands out for me is the migrant boat, because it relates, you know, to today's issue, which is a major one, and that everybody, you know, should wake up and. Uh, Come on, let's get these people to safety. We can't help them. I think that's the problem as well of this installation. It's yeah. like to feel useless, to, you know, when you Not go out of... Exactly. When you go out of this park, then to do action on your own. So what's next in this theme amusement park? Yes, after this, uh, you know, dramatic um, events, let's, let's go and see uh, a drawing artist yeah. and see what she, she has to say. So these are portraits, but they are not your regular portraits. What's the idea behind it and how did you come up with all of it? Well, the main idea around the reverse portraits is that um, they can be either surprisingly revealing or you make assumptions about who you think these people are, like their ethnicity, gender, etc. And it sort of challenges your assumptions and makes you think, why do I necessarily think that's the case? Because some of them are timeless, like this one and that one, but some of them are very current, like the ones with the headphones and stuff. So it's about that. Well, usually in an amusement park, you, you pose for a portrait for, yeah. of your face. Here yeah, it's uh, from the back. So just having a, a funny side of it. We can talk more about this installation. You say that, so this relates to the hot horse meat scandal, right? Yes. Um, basically, a couple of years ago, there were uh, some investigation that uh, like the lasagne or meat that you would eat uh, was actually horse. Instead, like they didn't label uh, correctly, like in order to make more profit, exactly. So just to raise, um, you know, the awareness of it again, because even so, no one talk about it anymore. It's still happening. So that's one of the. Yeah, it, w it was news for about five minutes, and then people forget about it again. Exactly, people switch channel, whereas this is still very important. You know, it's the food we eat. So this is pretty lively. Yes, it's a uh, cheerful and. Uh, at the same time. It's a nice ride. And if you take your kids, you have a lot of explaining to do. Well. Mommy, why is that horse upside down and there's a butcher? Exactly. Why does it 
<laughs> but this is this is actually the closest that we've come to uh, the feeling of a real amu amusement park in the whole thing. And at the same time, it's kind of eerie with that butcher right there. Yes. You almost don't see him. Yeah. No. Oh, now it's over. Back to reality. Again. Yeah. Back to eating horse meat. <laughs> I love this music. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. That was fun and eerie at the same time. Are you hungry for some horse? No, not um, at the moment. Me neither. No. Let's check out the next thing. Okay, let's go to the seaside. The, the seaside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, kind of. Yeah. We're gonna see a, a lady attacked by seagulls. You wanna chill? One, One person only. Cheers, mate. <laughs> ah, it's nice to sit down. Dismal land is a little bit uh, exhausting and overwhelming, but it's nice to sit here at this table. No? It's a loop. Um, I think it's done by a contemporary artist. Uh, his name is uh, Michael Belt. He also did another um, artwork, the Lou Roll, where you can uh, have some picnic as well. So the good thing about this Manon is uh, you can see art, contemporary art. You don't need to go to a gallery and uh, it's for everyone to see here. But this Moulin actually also has a normal gallery, right? Yes. yes. This uh, one? So, exactly. So behind us is the uh, entrance to the contemporary art gallery featuring, uh, I believe, like 58 artists, uh, including, uh, you know, the major um, UK artists like Damien Hirst. So we have like the beach ball floating above uh, uh, razor sharp knives which you know it's quite impressive to see here so it's uh, it's worth you know having a look um, around but apparently uh, we were told uh, that we cannot go and film inside so I don't know if it's you know part of the dismal experience being disappointed <laughs> very disappointing you can see it from outside but you cannot go and film it okay. So it's all secret for apparently for copyright reason or something. Damn. Damn it. Yes, I remember her. Yeah, she's uh, a bit dizzy, but actually, if you look at her in the, I would say, the nighttime, she appears fine. But the entire scenery is a bit uh, dizzy. The castle is all tear down; it's about to collapse. Um, everything is an installation by Banksy. And behind us, well, in front of us, we can see some artwork as well from uh, Alex Void. He just say, "It's mediocre." I think that's some of it. 
It's nice and sunny, we can sit and relax for a second. This piece is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and it's surreal. I mean, it's a, it's a real police van from an uh, island that had been transformed in, um, I would say, in a kid ride that goes into um, almost like a radioactive water yeah. and it's spraying fontaine as well out of it. Quite surreal. But it's a real one. <laughs> yeah, have a nice holiday. Yes. Um, <laughs> and then over there you have a, a dolphin installation by Banksy as well. Ah, uh, this one here, right? Yes, uh, exactly. So the environment uh, theme comes a lot during this um, this amusement park. You can see with the dolphin, but also with um, with the sea world coming out of the yeah. toilet as well. And then next to it, you have uh, also like uh, an artwork by Banksy. Yeah. It's called like the the fat cat, who's <laughs> having dinner while his family is standing next to him. You want to go look at it? Yes, we, let's have a look. While well, um, this one is um, is a mini golf, but it's uh, like any yeah. of the amusement from Banksy, you cannot win. Yeah, it's very annoying. And it's the mini golf. Exactly. Meaning the golf is full of oil. Exactly, yeah. and you see the spillover at the background. But if you come closer, when you play, the ball gets lost and never comes back. Yeah, great. And so this is the gorilla workshop. Yes, Where one of them. With? Okay. Yes. Let's go. Let's Hello. Go. Hey, Bill. <laughs> can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Got everything. Uh, yeah. For demonstration. Um, can you tell me why? Why is this in an art show? So art, often, particularly this kind of art, has a background that's very political, and I think there's a lot of political stuff behind the show. I think it's really important to show the actual politics in a more direct way. We uh, there's like a magazine here, Strike Magazine. They've got like lots of activists write for them, lots of like different groups who are actually taking action on the kind of thing this art's talking about. And I think art and politics are inherently intertwined. Okay. And I think this means that people can get involved yeah. after they've seen the art, yeah, been inspired, sure. they can be involved in the politics. Great. Well, how does it work? Okay, so here is our handy bus stop. Yeah. Um, we have got this pack of tools, thanks to globalization, only five companies in the world own this kind of bus stop advertising space. Um, so these tools will get you into almost all of them. Um, we have three, they're really simple tools, but one of them only is for ad bus stops, so it's good to get them yeah. in this pack. Here we have our very own bus stop. This poster on the bus stop is one that appeared around London in this series, which was a direct subversion of the Metropolitan Police's own adverts, which were promoting lies. So the SPG, a shady subgroup of Stripe magazine, decided to replace those adverts with something more honest. We're, in, we're showing people how they can do that too. So I'll do our demonstration in our um, They're really simple tools, because they're just really simple yeah. things. Everyday things. Everyday things. So there's usually holes in the sides, little doors in the side. These tools will get you into all of that. This one's a little bit different. <laughs> Open a awesome. bus stop, make sure you have your high-vis vest on, don't cover your face, don't wear a hood, just look like it's your job. You can take down the poster, slide in your own design, and then close your bus stop and walk away. Perfect. So when people do street art, they take a liberty and they do something in society, and you could say that yeah. this would be the same kind of thing? Yeah, I think this is really similar. I think there are, there's advertising spaces all around all of our cities. We were bombarded with these images. I think the street art movement is a way of like reclaiming public space with art. And I think this just puts them into a more professional looking space. And you can show a different kind of message in a different kind of way, but ultimately it's a similar background. Actually, this kind of thing was um, originally done recently by a group called Brandalism, who replaced all the adverts with art um, and just simple art, no names. And I think it's very interconnected about public space and ownership. Well, basically, this is a one poster gallery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for art. For art. Or messages. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm good at shooting tins. Five corks, two pounds. That's a bargain. It's a rip off. It's a rip off. I'll give it a go. 
Yes. You want the first shot? Okay, try. <laughs> I guess you go like this. You can't win. No, but it's the same in pretty much every amusement park, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. yes. we're gonna go in and spin around and not yes. win anything? Yes. It's an oh. astronaut caravan, so it's supposed to be, I don't know, NASA approved or something like that. Ah, yeah, yeah it says NASA on the side, yes. so, so, we'll so it's see for what, astronauts. We'll see what he does, whether we're gonna fly or okay. be dizzy. Okay. Let's okay, go. yeah, let's go. Just gonna stick us in there. How many people are in there? Is there another entry? <laughs> it's like a clown car, like everybody keeps coming out. So this one now. Yes. Well, we excited. <laughs> Best. That was one crazy ride. Excellent, I think. Very excellent setup. Upsetting. In yeah. the, at the same time, we are very, you know, confused what happened. And the crew makes you feel so not welcome at the same time. At the same it's, time. It's such an enjoyment being here. Mm, yes, as well. <laughs> like it's entertainment where you come out and you're just, you know, dizzy. And at the same time, you know, it's like the NASA installation without the money of it. Yeah. It's. It's a surprising on top of that. It's, you see it from the outside mm. and you come in and it's something that you don't expect. Exactly. So which different. Is, yeah, which is very different. So do you have a service desk here? You don't care? Are you happy? How many, how many programs do you want? How much are they? A fiver. What's, What's in inside? What's inside? You don't know. Who can we ask? Okay. You don't know? What do okay. we do? We'll get one on the way out. Right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day. Guess who at the time? It's so bad. I mean, yeah, they shouldn't film us, they should film her. Yeah, exactly. But that's the part where you yeah, yeah. look at her. The, so. the truck. I think I've seen it somewhere before, right? It's pretty iconic. Yes, um, I think it was shown uh, a couple of years ago at uh, Burning Man. Uh, the artist is uh, Mike Ross. Yeah. It's a big rig sculpture. Pretty iconic. Yeah. Interesting as well. And over here there's a show going on? Yes, with a Judy and Punch show, I think, with puppets. <laughs> What's the matter? What a cow! He's lucky he could get you. I speak not in a sexist way, and thoughts are already wild. Not I indeed, I'm a new man, or 
What can you tell me about Punch and Judy? Um, I think she's talking about everyday issues as well and what you see in the news in a in a comical way. Yeah. It's a show mainly for adults, not for children, even though they're using puppets. Yeah, it's a children's setting, but it's adult topics. Exactly. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. A lovely bit of fun. A lovely little slap tick. That's the way it's done. You want to take a photo of me doing the selfie hole? Here we had an installation by, by uh, Lush. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the funny thing is that Lush has been going at Banksy quite a lot in his previous artwork. Yes. And all of a sudden you see Lush in a Banksy show. Like, what, what? Yeah, it's a very surprising. But I mean, I think Lush is clever like Banksy, so I can see why they would work together. Yes, um, they have the same kind of humor as well. So yeah, so 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 uh, children need money as well. Yes, well, children need to have some loans so they can be, you know, have some debt for all their life. Ah, yeah, That's great to adapt all your life. The sarcasm of uh, Banksy with uh, this installation. So you go there and you can ask for a loan that is, I don't know, like uh, three thousand percent interest. Oh. For your pocket money. Watch out. Well, I can see there's already a long line to have yeah, these pocket money loans. Popular. It's very popular. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah why not? This was inspired by uh, the way that um, payday loan companies and, and credit companies in general use like child-friendly imagery to, firstly, to make it seem less like a dangerous kind of product to adults, but also to groom the next generation of um, customers, like to get the kids into it. And a lot of companies do that, like through. Um, Uh, that's why you get toys in Happy Meals and stuff like that. It's like once you get 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 the child, you can own the adult for the rest of their lives. Um, so, child advertising in general is something I find really uh, sinister, and um, especially when it comes to things like uh, high interest loans. This is a self service loan repayment kiosk for the kids. It's a uh, child height, and uh, so the kids come in. They just need to swipe their uh, they swipe their credit card to uh, empty their bank account. Oh, didn't do it properly. And it just removes the funds from your, from your bank account. Oh, lovely. So no more money for the kids. <laughs> Not anymore. No, you'll be now charged an empty bank account fee. This is a, a fake toy I made. Uh, Multicolored bits of plastic and is um, just kind of uh, like inspired a lot by the way uh, toy companies kind of come up with the, uh, the toy before they come up with the story yeah. you know, uh, kind of thing and uh, but the weird thing about this is kids want this even though it's a deliberate piss take you get, get them coming into the shop and going like dad multicolored bits of plastic like can we get it like how much and stuff like that so it's like once you get enough of the things in the same place like the logos and the, the colors and the face stick a face on a bit of plastic and kids want it essentially collect them all Some are harder to get than others, <laughs> yes. so you end up with multiple ones of the yeah, no yeah. normal ones. Yeah, It's yeah. like football stickers as well, you know, you, you could sell a child a book full of football players, or you could sell them an empty book and make them buy the stickers to put it in for like, and it costs, you could, you, 60 quid, yeah. Yeah, so 60 pounds. Um, but yeah, there's also, uh, there are some, another, some other financial products such as uh, Bouncy Castle Mortgages. Um, <laughs> your bouncy castle may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. Yeah. Uh, But that's what everybody wants, a bouncy castle. Well, yes. Yeah. Especially if you, get, you can refinance your uh, existing bouncy castle to pay for extensions or like improvements. So. Yeah, so we, uh, we offer a free toy to kids to get them in the door, basically. But they only get a free toy after three late repayment charges. So it um, ends up costing around £450. Yeah, for, for a piece of plastic with eyes? That's um, actually felt and, oh, and, felt and some bits of plastic, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the eyes are very important. Uh, <laughs> you know uh, you wanted. This one's made by kids for kids as well, so you know, it's uh, so cool. Get some child labor going. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you. No problem at all. Do you know why, why we're not allowed to go inside the castle? Um, so we have, uh, we're not allowed to film inside the castle. Uh, because there is an installation by Banksy that is called the Cinderella carriage, the red carriage. So uh, she's upside down and there's a lot of uh, flashlights. So I guess that's why you're not allowed to uh, film it, okay. basically. But that's what the people are going to see uh, inside. 
and it's uh, reminiscent of uh, Lady Diana death as well sure. with uh, a Disney twist if you want yeah whole vibe of the whole place yes. all the things work together and the music the staff the broken downness the kind of it made it feel a bit of shit and, and it's it's a very special experience for for art